Good morning, and welcome to Daylight with Dean, number 268 on, I didn't put the right date on there, on January 23rd, 2021. I will edit my post uh, to include the date. I am so grateful that you are here with me this morning. I slept in some this morning and then had a delightful couple hours with my wife, just uh, resting, laughing, talking. Uh, and so I am not enjoying my first sip of coffee this morning, but this is my first sip of my third cup of coffee this morning. So let's enjoy this together. Uh, the background is a little light this morning, so uh, the lighting is not ideal, but I have a lot to share uh, this morning, and I'm so grateful that you're here today. Um, I have to say, uh, there are a few days that go by that I don't realize that I am the luckiest husband in the world. Um, when I met Leslie 30 years ago this spring, um, my life changed forever, and I am so grateful that I get to be uh, married to her, and so grateful that um, she blesses my life and I bless hers, and and um, I just, when I see the way that some spouses interact with each other and treat each other, it just is so heartbreaking because it's so far below the possibility of what God has intended for us and what is possible. Um, so I'm so grateful for my wife. And uh, the other day when I went to the store, um, as I mentioned before, I bought her her uh, Luza peach juice that she loves. She loves the glass bottle. She loves the liter size. Um, she loves the uh, viscosity, the texture of this, and uh, she was lamenting that she ran out the other day. And I'm like, well, I, I bought four of them for you, so you still have two left, and she was so excited. And then this morning, I woke up, and um, Leslie was making French toast, uh, from my favorite French toast style of bread, challah bread. And I just find this bread just the perfect bread for French toast. And she watched a new recipe. Um, you probably can't see any of that. It'll probably spill before you can see any of it, but that's the leftover French toast. Good morning. Hi. <laughs> I just wanted to, where am I at? Over here. Right over here, yeah. I wanted to say good morning, and I wanted to say um, thank you to everyone who's been praying for me. Um, got cleared yesterday. I'm going to be going back to work on Monday. Um, yesterday was exactly one month I've been in the house in quarantine um, with others and myself with COVID, and I just um, want to thank all of those who um, reached out to me personally or through Dean or just, you know, on your own just... Uh, prayers and well wishes and um, generosity. I am, oh, the generosity and kindness of those who brought food or stopped by and left little things or brought a book uh, or two or three or maybe I read eight. I don't know. Oh, you read more than eight books. <laughs> maybe ten. Um, I am a reader and, and um, through all of the sickness and sleeping, I still was able to find a lot of joy and um just a time to pause. So I just wanted to say thank you. And I am drinking this yummy product here. It's really good. I do love it. So we are um, going to go see the grandson today and the kids and have a little Christmas this morning. We have not seen um, the kids, Zoe and Tyler and Mikhail, to exchange gifts. So that will be really a great day. Nice. So... I think it does Ruby know that this is waiting now, for her. I'm going to go. I'm going to. Do you want to set this back over there? Yeah. All right. Thank you. The secret with the melted butter, two tablespoons that you melt and then pour in, and then it makes these little crystals, and it was really good. <laughs> and brown sugar. 
Brown sugar, not white sugar. <laughs> Tablespoon of vanilla, not a teaspoon. Here's your beverage, by the way, here. Mm. So if you cannot tell, uh, she brings great joy <clears throat> to our household, to my life, to our family, to our children. Everywhere she goes, uh, she just brings great, great joy. And she read a post to me this morning on Facebook that I have pulled up on my screen and would like to read because it is uh, really cool. Uh, my friend on Facebook, Laura Schallenberger, posted, reposted this that a friend of hers had posted or reposted. So she said, a friend shared this recently. It is a great pit perspective on choosing joy, taking control of our thoughts, attitude, and happiness. And I'd like to invite you to see the lady that this is written about. Um, so that's the lady that this post I'm about to read is uh, written about. I don't know if you can see that or not, but I'll trust that you, uh, you were able to. Um, so the post reads, this beautiful, well-versed 83-year-old lady fully dressed every morning at 8 a.m. sharp with her hair done in fashion and perfectly applied makeup is moving to a retirement home. Her husband recently died, which motivated her move. After many hours of patiently waiting in the hall of the home, she smiled sweetly when they told her her room was ready. As she moved her walker toward the elevator, she was given a detailed description of her small room, including the curtains hanging from her window. I love it, she said with the enthusiasm of an eight-year-old girl who was just handed over a new pet. Mrs. Jones, you haven't seen the room. Just wait. That doesn't matter, she replied. Happiness, this is still her talking, happiness is something you decide over time. Whether or not I like my room doesn't depend on how the furniture is arranged. It depends on how I arrange my mind. I've already decided that I like it. It's a decision I make every morning when I wake up. I have the choice. I can spend the day in bed going through the difficulty I have with my body parts that don't work or get out of bed and be thankful for the parts that do work. Every day is a gift, and as long as my eyes open, I will focus on the new day and the happy memories I've stored just for this time in my life. Happiness is like a bank account. You withdraw from it what you deposit. So my advice would be to deposit a lot of happiness into your memory account. Remember these five simple things. Free your heart from hate or discord. Free your mind from worries. Live simply. Give more. Take less. There you go. Um, so I was also... Um, Les and I discovered this new phrase this week uh, called dewy eyes. <laughs> and I got dewy eyed when I was reading her post because just as I feel that so many marriages choose to live below the level of joy available to them, I think that so many people have not trained and arranged their minds to live with joy and gratitude and love and peace and goodness. And they choose to live so far below the life that Jesus came to give them. And, and this is just sad. <laughs> I don't get codependent. I don't try to force somebody to change it. It's just heartbreaking and sad to see so many people 
that have been given the gift of life choose to live miserable lives. And I, I so appreciated that post, Laura. Thank you for sharing that um, and blessing all of us with that. Um, shortly after that, I... Um, I'm going to get dewy-eyed again. <laughs> Shortly after that, I saw the post of the daughter of one of my close friends that passed away five years ago. Uh, Jocelyn Bish Godot, I think is how you say her new last name. Uh, I think it was five years ago that her father died. It was in the wintertime, so five had years ago today or this week um, that her father passed away. He was in his 50s, mid 50s. And her father passed her Dave Bish was a very special friend to me. Uh, been a fan of Dave pretty much all of my adult life. He was a church planting pastor in Du Bois and planted the Tri-County Church of God and just always respected him. Loved the way he thought, loved the way he loved, loved the way he approached life and the adventure that he lived with and when he passed away he was on a adventurous hike a race hike with hundreds of other people way up in the mountains and he passed away on that hike and it was so jarring that Saturday morning to get the call from my friend Laura Schallenberger's husband Bob Schallenberger that Dave had passed away um it um, it jarred me in ways that I couldn't describe. So much so that a week later, I just did not find the energy to confront his passing and drive up to Du Bois for his amazing funeral service. I I uh, watched it online, but uh, it it's been a heavy loss for me that I have not um, that I have not fully processed through. I know that several of you on here knew and loved Dave as well. Well just a little bit ago this morning she posted uh, Jocelyn posted I'm so grateful to have such a thoughtful husband. Jake brought tea berry ice cream home to me last night to celebrate my dad today. T-Berry was his favorite. Five years seems like both a lifetime and a blink of an eye. We miss you every day, but are so thankful for the time we had with you and the many lessons you taught us. Dad, thank you for being such an amazing husband, father, pastor, and friend. You are missed by so many. I love you. And her post moved me so much that I got dewy-eyed again. And I decided to comment. And I said, I know you and I don't really know each other personally, but I want you to know, I love your dad and can hardly believe I will have to wait to he till heaven to see him again. As such a kingdom-minded, generously supportive, example-setting, community-impacting, grateful-hearted, great-hearted, church-planting pastor and minister of the gospel, and dear friend. It is terribly lonely 
without him. By the way, my mom loved tea berry gum, and your note of the ice cream brought me joy. Thank you, Jocelyn. Um, so it's a, probably a little more than a dewy-eyed Saturday morning for me. <laughs> um, Dave's passing was one of those that I... still really haven't come to terms with. We served on the church planting team together. We attended conferences together. When we started the river, he was on the church growth team that supported us, and his church supported us significantly our first two years. And uh, he lived in Dubois, so I didn't see him frequently. I would call him occasionally. In the past five years for me, it just feels like I've just not talked to him in quite some time. So I guess is this is the part of part of me coming to terms with the passing of my close friend. Five years later. I love you, Dave. Thank you. Well, guys, I don't have much more <laughs> right now. Uh, you will notice later in the morning, have I coughed once on daylight today? Nope. Um, pretty much make it through the day without that. Mornings and evenings, it shows up a little bit more. I am wearing my Penguins uh, shirt this morning to celebrate their shootout win last night over the New York I think it was the Islanders or Rangers. I think it was the Islanders. And uh, nice to see three straight home wins after the two initial losses in their opening two games. Uh, they play again tomorrow. Um, we filmed the sermon yesterday on location. My friend Pam Hoffman will be excited to see where I filmed it because she was insisting that I consider filming it at the place that she recommended. <laughs> so uh, I'm quite certain that uh, you will enjoy it. And um, I'm so looking forward to uh, tomorrow and the service and the message, our in-person services. And uh, I appreciate you guys. Thanks for letting me kind of just be where I am and uh, come on and get emotional. <laughs> Grateful it doesn't happen every time, <laughs> but I'm grateful that it still happens when it needs to. So I'm going to pray, and then we will uh, get on with our Saturday. Let's pray. Father, we're so grateful for your blessing and your faithfulness and your goodness. I thank you for those example setters ahead of us. I thank you for the lady that posted the story about um, the lady that went to the personal care home and her great attitude about the room that she hadn't even seen but was about to enter and she loved it even without seeing it because she chose to. And now as my phone rings, <laughs> I just want to thank you for... I want to thank you for this day. I want to thank you for the sunshine. I want to thank you for each person here. 
I, I want to thank you for those trendsetters in my life that have taught me how to see and find and look for the good and celebrate it and to rearrange my mind to choose joy. I thank you for my mother. I thank you for my father that did this. I thank you for my Uncle Lloyd that taught me this. I thank you for my pastor, friend, and mentor, Steve Childs, that did this. I thank you for Dave Bish that did this. I thank you for those dear, dear, dear people in my life, too many to mention, that had this unique ability to choose joy. I thank you for my mother and father-in-law and my wife and the way they do this. And may this be passed on to my children, my friends, my parishioners, everyone that is on this journey with me, my daylight friends. May each of them take one step closer to choosing joy every day. It is with great anticipation that we look forward to all that's ahead today. We're so grateful for this time we have. Your love, faithfulness, and goodness, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, guys, I can't wait till I get to see you tomorrow morning. Sorry for coming on so late, but I had a beautiful, leisurely couple hours this morning without the gym, <laughs> without getting up at 5 a.m., and just enjoying a nice Saturday morning. God bless you all, and can't wait till I get to see you tomorrow.